Ah, comic books. You've got to love them, especially in the current year. Whether it's reimagining Bruce Wayne as an Asian-American teenager accompanied by his gay butler Alfred, or a body-positive Wonder Woman that strikes fear into the hearts of all-you-can-eat buffets everywhere, or whatever these two are meant to be. The entire industry seems to have spent the past few years self-destructing. I mean, reinventing itself into something more diverse and inclusive. And what could be more diverse and inclusive than a YA novel about the gay, goth, plus-sized daughter of legendary DC superhero Starfire, struggling to escape the long shadow cast by her famous mother and find her own sense of identity during her turbulent teenage years? It's a good premise, really, allowing the writer to explore questions of family legacy, personal identity, societal expectations, the real-world implications of fame, and the complex and often difficult relationship between mothers and their teenage daughters. So let's take a look at this exciting new work, shall we? <laughs> it does prompt a few questions though, like why does her upper lip project several inches from her face? Why does one of her hands seem to be suffering from chronic gigantism? Why does this front cover look like it was drawn by me after several pints of methylated spirits? I thought the whole point of YA novels is that they're intended for, well, young adults. So they're supposed to look cool, edgy, sexy and compelling. This looks like the kind of thing your weird hippie aunt would get you for Christmas when you're five years old and you'd politely dump in some cupboard and never talk about again. Is there a reason the author might have chosen to style her main character like this? Well, let's take a look at her, shall we? <laughs> Now, call me crazy, but I do detect a faint resemblance here. The thing is, it would be easy enough for me to point and laugh at what's clearly just another cringeworthy, self-insertion vanity project doomed to fall into the garbage can of history, written by an author whose ego probably outstrips her creative ability, and commissioned by a struggling publisher desperate to appeal to a woke audience that probably should have allocated its declining resources to something with a better chance of success. Like burning money. I could do all of these things and probably have a good laugh along the way. But really, the bigger question that comes to mind for me is, what exactly are we becoming if this is the new standard for our comic book heroes? See, we've been doing this kind of thing for a lot longer than you might think. In fact, ever since us humans have been able to conceive of stuff beyond our own experience, we've been kind of fascinated by the idea of heroic characters embarking on epic adventures, righting wrongs, and defeating evil enemies. It's kind of the basis for our whole civilization. Whether it's Achilles and Hector in the Iliad, or Perseus slaying Medusa, or Beowulf fighting Grendel, or Saint George killing the dragon, you could pick basically any culture on Earth at any time period, and the chances are you'll find legends and stories of heroic men and women accomplishing great deeds. Characters who could best be described as more than human. Men of destiny, Men of great skill or superhuman strength that allows them to overcome the most powerful and terrifying enemies imaginable. Jump forward a few thousand years and we're still doing the exact same thing with a new generation of heroes and villains that we've created all for ourselves. The classical heroes, gods and monsters from our ancient legends have been replaced by modern day reinterpretations and instead of storytellers spinning their tales around a campfire, now we have comic books, movies and TV to satisfy our needs. The technology might have changed, but the basic motivation hasn't. We still have the same drive and hunger for stories of larger-than-life heroes and villains, the same need to believe in things that are grander and bigger than our own petty existence, the same aspiration to be more than we are. And I guess this is the real point I'm trying to make here. The heroes we create are a symbol and a reflection of our human potential, not human reality. They represent the very best of what we can and should strive for. They encourage us to reach higher, to try harder, to go further than we ever thought possible. They push us to see beyond the boundaries and limitations of our everyday lives, to dream about what we could be, instead of fretting about what we are. And perhaps most importantly of all, they remind us that there's still something fundamentally good in all of humanity. 
For all our flaws and our mistakes and our weaknesses, it's our ability to pick ourselves up, to move forward, to strive to better ourselves and overcome our limitations that's defined all of our history. It's what's driven us to build great cities, invent new technologies, compose great symphonies and works of art, to explore the furthest reaches of our planets and to reach for the stars. The potential that exists inside each and every one of us is as unlimited as our imaginations and the heroes that we create to inspire and motivate and guide us reflect the very best aspects of that boundless potential. So I guess it's kind of sad and disheartening to watch today's cynical, nihilistic, mean-spirited attempts to undermine, subvert and degrade those same heroes. Instead of respecting and looking up to them, it's become fashionable to mock and belittle and criticise them as relics of a bygone era or symbols of oppression or discrimination without really understanding what they stood for in the first place. People who once looked to our heroes as symbols to aspire to, as a motivation to become more than they are, now see them as an unflattering reflection of their own weaknesses and failures. Rather than try to better themselves and their lives through hard work, courage and sacrifice, they instead find perverted joy in tearing down anything that stands higher than them bringing everyone and everything down to their level instead of the harder but more rewarding task of raising themselves up. And the end result of this way of thinking is a small, petty, envious view of the world. The kind of thing that belongs in the minds of small, petty, envious people who hide their dark intent behind a facade of compassion and fairness. The kind of people who hysterically preach acceptance of everything, no matter how ridiculous, harmful or pathetic. Because once you accept everything, then there's no need to strive for anything. And instead of the mighty and inspiring heroes we used to look up to, well, you end up with stuff like this. Now ask yourself, who exactly do you think is going to be inspired and motivated by this? Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now. <laughs>